Hello, and welcome to Tinker with a T. My name is Gabe, and I am a college student studying mechanical engineering. Now, last spring, the spring of 2020, I decided I wanted to find a project car. With the coronavirus restrictions starting to tighten down, I wanted something that I could work on at home to spend the time. While looking for a suitable project, I came across a 1927 Ford Model T. Uh, the mid-20s to the mid-30s are probably my favorite period in history. The Model T's, the Model A's, the Great Depression, that area is, is super cool to me. So this 1927 Model T was really a perfect fit. Now the car had last been registered on the road in 1949 and ever since then had been sitting outside, so it was in pretty rough shape. It was remarkably complete, so that was a good candidate for restoration. Now if you look back through my channel, you'll see my first video describes the condition of the car before I started. I go through all the different components and parts of the car and show what they were like before I started working on the car. The rest of the videos have been describing my restoration process. I'm doing a complete frame off restoration, tearing down all of the components to check them and fix before I put them back together. I am now about halfway finished. I have most of the drivetrain completed finish the engine transmission and just put them back in the car. I still have to work on the accessories of the engine, the starter, generator, ignition systems, as well as a few things to tighten up on the rear axle. So the next few videos will be discussing the drivetrain as we move forward. Now I wanted to briefly discuss the drivetrain in the Model T. Now the Model T was first produced in 1908 and the production ran through 1927. Now this specific car was built in December of 1926 and is listed as a 1927 model. Now I wanted to discuss the differences between the early cars and the latter cars. Now if you look at the body styles, you would see they are very different. The 1908 car through to the last car, a lot of differences between the two in the body style. But mechanically, there are very few differences. Now while the body styles went through many different stages, of uh, updating, the mechanics really didn't. There's a few minor changes between the two. The early cars had the battery box in the cab, the pedal, pedals were a little different, they didn't have a starter, uh, some minor differences, but the actual bones of the car are almost identical. The engine block was almost the same, there's a few differences in the really early cars, but the engineering, the principles behind the cars are exactly the same, the technology is the same. There's no differences in the technology between the 1908 car and the 1927. And to me, that shows that in 1908, this car was really ahead of its time. I mean, it had a top speed between 40 and 45 miles an hour, which for the rough roads in 1908 was too fast. You couldn't go that speed on the wagon roads in 1908. By the mid-20s, the roads started improving, and this car really hit its prime. The mid-20s, the Model T production numbers exceeded anything else of its day, or even today for that matter. Uh, they, they built and sold over a million cars every year in the mid-20s. And those production numbers were not passed until the Model or the Beetle came along in the 1970s, finally passed for its production numbers. So really amazing, uh, the technology went into this car. And I also wanted to point out the unique design solutions that Ford used in the period. If you look at this car today, you'd say it's not much. But for 1908, the approaches to the design were really amazing. For instance, the gearbox is a two-speed planetary gear transmission. And it's very similar to modern transmissions in that it has bands, like automatic transmissions. Some people call it a manual automatic because it uses bands and planetary gears instead of actually shifting gears. So no gears actually become unmeshed in this transmission. And for the period, Ford did that because the standard gearboxes where you actually shifted gears were very noisy. They didn't have synchros, they didn't have the good gear technology to make them quiet. So they are very loud, noisy, clunky gearboxes. So he went with this design because it was compact, saved weight, and was a better transmission. It cost more to manufacture, but he was able to bring those costs down. And the Model T, in the height of its production in the mid-20s, it reached a price of, I believe, $260, if I remember correctly. In today's money, that's like three or $4,000. Very, very cheap for a quality car of the period. 
So I just think it's really amazing getting into this car and looking at the design solutions because a lot of these things you would not do today because we have different production methods, different uh, production capabilities and materials. But for the day, they had to have some really innovative solutions to come up with certain things. The way the seals work, the way the felt works for the seals. They didn't have our neoprene seals that we have today. So all the oil seals had to be felt. And things like that that are vastly different from stuff you would do today, um, but most of it worked quite well. There's a certain few things that didn't work and that they were limited in those periods. But it works really well, and so I think from an engineering standpoint, the car is really amazing, and I'm really enjoying getting into the car and learning everything about it. Because when I started, I did not know a thing about Model Ts. I just knew they were built in 1908 to 1927. That's about all I knew. So getting into it has been completely blank slate learning about how this car works, and I've really enjoyed getting to know how it works. So now I just have a few things to finish up on the mechanical side. I'm almost done with all the mechanics on the car. Now I just have to do the carburetor, ignition, a few little things like that, and then the mechanics will be complete and I'll be on to body work and actually getting the car back together. So I'm really excited to continue from here. And I just wanted to make this brief introduction for people new to the channel or new to the project and Model T's in general, just to show you what I am doing to work on this car. Well, I think that just about wraps up everything I wanted to say. I did also want to mention that all of the music I've been putting to these videos is original mid-20s or early 30s music. I've been putting in the description what year they recorded and who performed them, if you're curious. But I, I felt that that really adds to the uh, style of the Roaring Twenties and the Model T to have authentic period music to accompany it. So that is the music that I've been putting to these videos. Also at the end of the clips I have lately been putting Laurel and Hardy or other Model T clips from the period of videos. I've been putting the description of what movie that came from in the description below. But those early videos are really funny with the Model Ts. They did a lot of funny stuff with them and blowing them up and stuff because there are so many of them around. So those videos are kind of cool. I've been putting them at the ends for your enjoyment. If you like this topic, if you like Model Ts or restoration, uh, please hit that subscribe button and you'll know when I upload future videos. If you leave a comment, I will do my best to get back to you with any questions or concerns you might have. As always, thank you for watching. He'd have to get under, get out and get under, to fix his little machine. He was just dying to cuddle his queen, but every minute, when he'd begin it, he'd have to get under, get out and get under, then he'd get back at the wheel. A dozen times they'd start to hug and kiss, and then the darned old engine, it would miss, and then he'd have to get under, get out and get under, and fix up his automobile. Millionaire Wilson said to Johnny one day, your little sweetheart don't appreciate you. I have a daughter who is hungry for love. She likes to ride every day. Johnny had visions of a million in gold.